Hello and welcome to Best of Live at Five. We were bringing you some highlights from the daily variety show that is Live at Five. Coming up tonight, John Partridge tells us about his starring role on stage in Chicago. David Farrell talks to Paralympic gold medalist Gordon Reid about his real triumph. And there's music in the studio from a new international. But first, Gary Newman might be best known for his hit singles Cars and Our Friends Electric, but the pioneer of electronic music has released more than 20 albums over his nearly 40-year career. It's rare for him to stop moving forward and take a look back, but that's exactly what he did on his recent tour, which included a night in Glasgow in September. While he was in town, he joined David Farrell and myself to tell us more about why he decided to dig out the old hits. Gary, thank you so much for dropping in to see us. Um, I know it's a very busy day for you. You're playing the O2 ABC uh, in Glasgow later on tonight, but you've got some very fond memories of playing in this part of the world, haven't you? Yeah, I didn't realise until a little while ago that it's uh, it was this day, September 20th in 1979, that I did my first ever big gig. Wow. Um, and it was here, That's in, in Glasgow. Unbelievable. So it's yeah. unintentional that the gig's in Glasgow tonight, or was that? Yeah, I only just realised that just that's, now. Do you know what? Is, is that called synchronicity or something where you're yeah. just in, in tune with yourself? That's amazing. So it's your live, your live anniversary, essentially, in Glasgow today. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So. Big celebration, perhaps? Eve, uh, extra special show for you? Well, I've only just realised. I've got to think of something now. <laughs> the pressure's on. You've Free champagne time. for everyone at the gig tonight. <laughs> that's it. The drinks, the drinks tab is on you. Yeah, um, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> We're kidding, by the way. We're cups kidding. of tea, yeah. cups of tea. <laughs> Water's free. Um, well, it's going to be a special gig tonight, but is this tour meant to be some sort of break f for you from touring in America? It, it's not it, not from touring in America, um, but I did. I, I had an album out in 2013 called Splinter, and I toured that for about two years. Um, and I've got another one coming out next year, and I'll, I'll be doing that for two years. So I've got this bit in the middle where I'm supposed to be writing. So this year was meant to have no no touring whatsoever. Um, but we did, we did three shows in, in Los Angeles uh, a while back doing these three old albums because mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't do old stuff hardly at all when I tour normally. I'm, I might not. Have a bit of, I, I got a bit of a thing about nostalgia and retro. And I just, it feels like I'm walking backwards when you, when you do it. And I hate this living on past glories thing. You know, I really, really do believe that you're only as good as your next album when you have to earn a longevity. You, you, know, you couldn't so just be many. giving it because you wrote yeah. something good 35, 40 years ago. You've yeah. got to keep on earning it. And I, really, and I really believe that. So I don't do it that oh. much. So what's next then if you're always, if you're never standing still and you're always looking to the future? What's next? Where do you go from here? Well, musically, you, you're new stuff. You, you know, that's, that's kind of what it's all about. But because I don't do old stuff very often when I'm touring, th there was an opportunity, here, like a gap, yeah. to, to do yeah. something where it didn't, I can't, I can't say contaminate my normal stuff, but it feels a bit like, you know. And, and if you do it once in a while, it's all right. It, it, every, every now and again, it can be fun, and you go back and visit some things that you don't normally do, and you remember, you know, and it's all good. Fun. And then you get on with what you like doing, which is, which is your new stuff. But if you did it a lot, if, you, if that was what your career had become, then I think it would be pretty soul-destroying, really, and I wouldn't I So wouldn't you're not a one-trick one one trick pony, are you? <laughs> I, I just... I'm, I'm really excited about where I'm going next. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, New material yeah. on the way. Yeah. Right. So yeah. this tour and this gig tonight in Glasgow, all the gigs in this tour, are very special for fans then because you are looking back. Yeah, yeah, exclusively. It, it's just uh, songs from the, third, the, the second, third and fourth album. I had these three number one albums in, in, uh, in about 12 months back then. And so, it's, and so they pretty much shaped what happened to me afterwards, you know, the, the whole career, for a while anyway. Yeah. And so... It, it's partly actually because the, I mean, the last one did really well. The last one, the, the last album was the best-selling album I've had since 1982, I think mm -hmm. it was. So it was a big step forward for yeah. me. And I think with that, I, I, I've begun to feel that I'd moved out of the shadow that the early success mm -hmm. created, because it was, I was you know, massive when it happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it just seemed to overshadow everything else I ever did and, and sort of hold you back mm -hmm. a little bit. And so I feel like I've come out from under that now, and that makes you feel a bit more charitable about your history rather than trying to distance yourself from sure. it and yeah. you know, insist that you're moving on. You can now look back and say, actually, it was pretty good. Yeah. You know, it did quite well. So you have always been indulging on. it a bit. As an artist, haven't you? You've always pushed boundaries. You've always tried new things. You've, You've been pioneered a lot, a, a, a lot. Try to, of, yeah. Uh, and from cars that make you feel safest of all to, well, more cars that make you feel safest of all. But you'll be hoping you never have to end up in any of these. The Blue Light Festival saw over 60 vehicles representing Scotland's emergency services 
go on display at Glasgow's Riverside Museum, including police bikes, mountain rescue vehicles and even some vintage fire engines. Our resident gearhead David went down to find out more. So the Blue Light Festival is part of um, our Festival of Wheels event. So it's the very last um, weekend um, of our Festival of Wheels. Um, it's the largest gathering of emergency vehicles in Scotland. We want it to be an interactive um, experience for the kids. So when they come down here, you'll be able to sit in fire engines, you'll be able to ring the bell, you'll be able to speak to the police, um, all the staff and the emergency services staff who are there. Everyone will be engaging with the children um, on the day and just letting them know a bit more about the jobs that they do. I'm with Archie, who is responsible and looks after this amazing fire engine behind us. Archie, tell us about this vehicle. It is absolutely pristine. Oh, well, I'm very, very <laughs> pleased that you like it. Thanks very much. It's a uh, 1989 Scania fire engine. Um, I've had it for about four years now. Uh, it's been in preservation since 2009. It, it's great fun to take it out and allow folk to to, to have a look at it. And people will be able to see it this weekend here at the Riverside Museum. People will see it this weekend. We'll all be here. We'll be here tomorrow. And uh, when the kids are climbing over it, because it, it's, well, it's hands-on, isn't it? People oh, can we'll come let, in and see. We'll let, let children and things in it. They can go into it. They can wear the helmets that we have behind us there. Uh -huh. um, they can wear jackets if they want. We'll let them sit in the driver's seat and they can sit as though they were driving the vehicle as well. About half years of BMW R1200 RT. It's not a standard civilian spec motorcycle, it's uh, adapted for police use. So it's got extras on it, um, slightly different gearboxes fitted, it's a bit more flexible. It's got blue lights, sirens, uh, it's got bespoke panniers that are fitted to it, which are easier for use by the police. A common view for lots of people is seeing the police bike fly past you in a convoy or in an escort situation. Well, our, our unit has the, the specialist job to, to escort um, VIPs um, and also any other high-risk types of um, situations. So that doesn't just include people, it can also be particular types of load that have to be moved through where there's a risk involved with them. Uh, Ken, you've got a, a friend with you. Yeah, Cran is a fully qualified mountain rescue search dog. Um, it takes about two years to train them and her job is to find missing people in the hills just based on human scent. It's only about a week since our last call out with the team, and that was just uh, somebody that had a, a lower leg injury, so it can happen anytime. We are a transport museum, and these are some fantastic vehicles that are going to be on display, um, old and new, so it lets you have a real feel for um, the services over a period of time and see what the changes are to the vehicles as well, and the changes are to people's jobs. <laughs> Well, from vehicles of the past and present to vehicles of the future now, driverless cars were just one of the amazing innovations on display at this year's TechShare Europe, an annual conference of accessible technology at the Glasgow Science Centre. David and I were joined in the studio by Robin Spinks of the Royal National Institute of Blind People and Elia Rodman of Orcam Technologies for a demonstration of another incredible invention. What technology can do nowadays is absolutely yeah. amazing. Elia, if you've got um, one of the VR glasses on, um, you're going to demonstrate it to us. What do we need to do? So this device is called Orcam Waking My up. Eye. Battery is 90% charged. And it's a wearable camera just here on the side of my glasses. Okay. And it can read text, it can recognize faces and identify products. So why don't we see how it reads text. I've got this piece of paper here. I'm going to hold it out in front of me, point to the text with my finger, and the device Three decodes quarters. it. And display. If there it's... <laughs> it's reading something from the background here. E there we go. Future. What king of? Hello and welcome to live at five. There you go. Wow. So you just look at it point and it, it registers it and like it just done, it just reads it back straight away. Absolutely. It'll read anything, wow. even some of the uh, signs in the background here in the room. It picks up yeah. all the text and it's got facial recognition as well. Oh. So if I just look at Robin over here. Robin. And there wow. we go. Light bolt. A N N. And the difference that, that will make That's Robin incredible. in daily life is huge. A big challenge for people really is access to information out and about. So you know, reading signs, reading menus, display boards and train stations and airports, etc. So a solution like this can really make it a whole lot easier for people. And it's pretty discreet as well. It's not yeah. too noticeable. Now, something like these glasses, I mean, it's just 
is outstanding. However, we've also heard there's a driverless car. That's right. Tell yeah. us about this. The UK's first driverless uh, vehicle system that will start running in Milton Keynes early next year. And last year we talked about this at the conference. This year we've actually got a driverless pod yeah. in the science centre so people can get up close and personal with it, jump inside it yes. and actually have a virtual reality experience. Well, it's great that a difference will be made from this conference in Glasgow. Guys, thank you yes. for joining thank us. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up after the break, John Partridge tells us what he's been up to since leaving EastEnders and we're finding out about the origami birds flying over Glasgow's south side. Stay tuned to Best of Live at Five.